should be good with that. All right. Hello, everyone. My name is uh, Rich Marshall. I'm a career advisor and internship coordinator for the Career and Professional Development Office here at the University of Wisconsin Oshkosh. And today we're going to be talking about career planning. What do I want to be when I grow up? One, uh, one session in the series that we have with our Sunday night sessions. And with this uh, interaction that we'll have today, we are really fortunate to have one of our employers representatives with us, uh, David Sweet from Fastenal. I will have David introduce himself in uh, just a moment. But just to segue a little bit into this, you know, the, the uh, average college student will actually change their major on average between four to six times during their uh, undergraduate uh, academic career. And I'll tell you, a lot of people will come into school and feel that they know what they're going to do with the rest of their life, and they end up changing gears as they start to, uh, to go into there. So whether you are undecided at this point in time, have no idea what you want to do in the future, or if you're not 100% confident, I want to tell you, you're not alone. There are resources out there both within the campus as well as within industry that can help you with this process. So I'm going to segue now. We'll give a little bit of uh, information on our presenters here, and I will start and turn things over to David. Hi. Uh, I'm David Sweet with Fastenal Company. I've been with Fastenal Company for uh, 28 years. It's my uh, first and only full-time job. And uh, I hope to uh, continue for a few more years with Fast and All. I manage $36 million in sales a year uh, between Sturgeon Bay and Fond du Lac. Uh, that would be the, the Fox Valley. I have uh, seven stores and six on-site locations, which totals out at about 103 employees. Um, a store uh, traditionally is a location public location with up to 500 customers. An on-site location is where we've kind of moved into uh, the customer or we've moved right next door to it. And we have uh, dedicated labor that just takes care of, of that customer site. Some uh, on-sites would be Oshkosh Truck. We have about 70 employed there. Uh, Pierce uh, Manufacturing up in Appleton, we have about uh, 30 there. Um, Gulfstream, Atco, some other businesses that, that we do on sites with. Um, we sell PPE, fasteners, janitorial supplies, power tools, hand tools, basically uh, soup to nuts. Um, Fastenal stock is a uh, top performer since uh, 1987 um, at a 38,000% return. Uh, Microsoft and, and Apple. Uh, more like 9,6700%. So um, trading today, we're probably about $46 a share. So uh, a, a real nice investment uh, strategy. Fastenal operates uh, about 2,300 branches across the nation and 900 on sites. Um, we do about $6 billion in revenue year with the, probably the world uh, coming in at 3,500 locations, 2,500 countries uh, make up that, you know, Fortune 500 company. One thing that's kind of interesting is, is uh, we've been selling vending machines for about seven years and we have 150,000 vending machines installed across uh, America. Um, we're installing probably, we're down a little bit right now with COVID, probably around the 90 machines per month. But pre-COVID, we were probably right around maybe 1,200 per month. Uh, the vending machines disperse PPE, gloves, glasses, tape measures, um, squincher, medical supplies, uh, just a lot of different uh, things out there. Our competitors in the vending market, uh, amount to about 10 competitors, and all together, they might have about 30,000 machines out there. So with us at 150,000 machines, we, we've really cornered the market um, and done quite well. And Fastenal carries about 1.3 billion inventory. So um, we're definitely a, a large company. Um, 
going all the way back to high school, I guess, uh, you know, what do you want to be when you grow up? Uh, I had kind of picked that, you know, I wanted to be a police officer. So upon graduation of high school, I uh, went up to Fox Valley uh, Technical College uh, for police science. It was a two-year kind of degree um, at that time. I graduated in two years and decided that I would go over to UWO and uh, finish out the extra two years in, in criminology and a couple other credits. But um, that was in the summer. So for the summer, I thought I'd get a full-time job uh, for the summer and uh, applied at Fastenal. And at the time, uh, the branches, we didn't have on-sites or anything like that. We were just, you know, kind of running the branches. And they would have two people at the branches. They'd have a general manager and assistant general manager. Well, when they got a little bit busier, they, they'd hire a third person. That's what they called the position. <laughs> And I got hired as a third person. Um, I guess I never looked back. That was 28 years ago. And I moved up to the assistant GM, moved up to the general manager of the Fond du Lac location. And uh, I, I then moved up to Oshkosh and uh, ran the Oshkosh location. And now I'm the district uh, manager for uh, the Fox Valley. Um, the growth of the company and the career advancement was very big. I could see at the time that, um, you know, there was a lot of avenues and they showed me a path to grow and, and that's what I did. Um, my work, wife worked for Epic Systems and that was another company that just showed tremendous growth opportunity and, and she worked them for about 25 years. Um, I guess, you know, if you're going to look for a company to grow for, uh, to, to join, I should say, you want to pick a company that has career advancement and, and has high-line growth um, and that they can do it to you. So that's what I got. Richard, are you there? Sorry, I didn't realize I was on mute here. So I <laughs> introduced myself here, and then we're going to dive into some different resources. So growing up, I wanted to be a surgeon. I traced that back probably to childhood out there. And, uh, you know, I wanted to perform surgeries. I wanted to help individuals. Uh, I wanted to be a part of healthcare, And that dream followed me into high school. And I joined an organization called Medical Explorers. And through that organization, we used to tour different facilities, but we also saw different procedures. So one of them was observing a cadaver. And during that, uh, I guess, observation, I'll tell you, I almost passed out. And then I realized I just didn't have uh, the ability, I guess, to, to handle that or to handle, you know, surgery, blood, things like that. So that was a mismatch. So at that point, I went into school wanting into college. I knew I wanted to go to college. I went in for education. I love the math science. I love the STEM field. So I wanted to be a high school teacher. And that factored in for a little while for me. And then I tapped into one of my interests, which was media, radio, television, film. And so I, I decided to major in that um, and pursued that you know, throughout my college. But about junior year, I started to realize, how am I going to be employed in this? And certainly, there are avenues to do that. But around this, you know, the Fox Cities area, they're really limited. And with family commitments, I needed to stay around this area. So I looked at business and eventually got into human resources and ended up with two majors. I did radio, TV, film, and then I graduated with human resources. And then I spent 13 years working in industry um, with a large part of college recruiting, of hiring students into organizations. You know, as I continue to advance, I certainly love the organizations I work for, like Oshkosh Corporation. But I will tell you, I got more and more disconnected from people. 
and I ended up more in strategic planning, which is great. I missed that one-on-one -on -one interaction. And, you know, I was certainly, uh, you know, performing well in that company. And, it, you know, it isn't that I hated it, but I just lacked that passion anymore for the field. So I did some exploration out there, really identified my interest in counseling, but in particular career counseling. And so that's where my role here comes in. Went back out of master's in counseling, and now I help prepare students versus hiring them out there in industry. But I never would have envisioned you know, this path would have taken me to where I am today. Okay. All right. So what I want to do, I'm going to start with going through some campus resources with you. I'm going to share my screen in just a moment here and show you some things that are available for you through this path. Again, as I said before, you are not alone. The trick with when we talk about what do I want to do when I grow up with career exploration is to help you find out more information you know, on different careers, different industries that are out there, to help you find that match. Because the ideal is for you to find a career, a job, a company that matches your values, your interests, your skills. We all have those. We're all unique in those. Organizations, career paths have their unique values, you know, uh, abilities, characteristics, and things like that. It's important for you to, to, uh, to, to certainly find that match because I'll tell you, the work week, it's long, you know, and it's, it, 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 you know, it's a significant part of our life. And it can be even longer and unrewarding, you know, if you have that mismatch that's out there. And unfortunately, you know, your happiness with the career can also transcend into other aspects of your life, like your personal life as well. So here I'm going to start with uh, sharing some campus resources. And I'm going to share my screen here in a minute. But I'm going to tell you our <laughs> office is one of a number of different offices here on campus that can help with this process, um, the Counseling Center. Undergraduate uh, Advising Resource Center, UARC, or others really work um, collaboratively to help individuals with uh, this, this exploration piece. So I'm going to stop sharing for a second here, and I'm going to share my screen, hopefully, if technology cooperates here with me. And I'm going to pull up our website. So on the Career and Professional Development website, we have a wealth of resources for students. In the major and career exploration area, you'll find that under majors and career, there's a whole page dedicated to major and career exploration. Now, just a moment ago, I mentioned those three offices. This will give you a good idea of, of some of the focuses that we have in each. Certainly, there's some crossover, but there's some uniqueness. More of that major exploration comes with Undergraduate Advising Resource Center. The counseling can help you, you know, with, with career counseling, with not having any idea of what career you would like to take or if it's difficult for you to make that decision. Then we come in with helping you find out more information regarding the different career paths that are out there, as well as connecting you to some amazing people in the field, like David from Fastenal, that could give you that firsthand information. Okay, so again, that's under our website with major and career exploration. So some resources I want to show you that are available to you as students uh, on campus here. A lot of these are going to be under this area. And what can I do with the major is the first one I want to walk you through. So what can I do with the major? Access this through our website because we've paid for these resources for you. If you Try to go direct. They may try to charge you for them. So please go to our website on that. I'm going to click on that exclamation point. And this is going to give you a lot of different avenues. Sorry, I'm scrolling through this pretty quick. But a lot, you know, these are termed majors. What I'm going to tell you is it doesn't necessarily mean that you have to have a major in these fields. These are more career paths, career directions that you have out there, okay? So I'm going to just pull up, I'll pull up marketing here. And you will find with marketing, there's a variety of different things that are out there, including sales and promotion. 
So with what can I do with major, it's going to show you different areas that you can get into. What are some of those, those major areas, major career paths? Who are typical employers? And then it will also include some strategies, maybe some things to keep in mind, some things that you will likely have to do to successfully get into those fields. How can you better prepare yourself to get into those? And sorry, I'm going to scroll down. I want to show you the bottom of this page. But at the bottom, it's going to give you great resources, different organizations connected to the field, areas to find out even more detail on this stuff, as well as areas for employment opportunities out there. So again, that's what can I do with a major, and you can access that through our website. The next one I want to pull up is called ONET. Now, what can I do with a major is pretty limited as the uh, information that you have, uh, that you get. It's basic information, but it's a great starting point. ONET provides you really detailed information out there. Okay? Uh, what ONET is, is part of the uh, Department of Labor. And they put out what's called the Occupational Outlook Handbook on an annual basis. They survey employers and get firsthand information on their workforces. So it is a real comprehensive base of different things. So there are two ways that you can search. One is going to be uh, just putting in a keyword. I put in sales. And you know, looking through some of these, let's, I'm just going to pull up a sales engineer here. And ONAT's going to give you detail. It'll give you an overview of that position. What are some typical job titles? What you can expect to do? Technology you'll use. And it goes into depth. Some of those things I talked about, like skills and values, abilities, all those are captured here. Okay. So not to panic, it does not mean that you have to know all this stuff or have experience in it. But if you do, this is a great thing for you to promote yourself in these different fields, and it's a great blueprint of things you might want to learn or experiences you may want to have while you're in school. It will also give you a good breakdown of what type of degree is required. Is it a four-year? Is it a you know graduate degree? As well as some information on average earnings, and growth potential that's in these areas as well. And you could do it on a national. You can also go on a state basis here. So pull up uh, a good realm of what we see at the lower end, the upper end, and a comparison of Wisconsin versus national. Okay. So again, that's all through owner. I did a keyword search, so back to the main page. There's also the ability to look at groupings of positions that they have assembled themselves. So if we look at, um, I'm going to pull up just manufacturing here. This will give you a rundown of different positions that are related in some way to manufacturing. And then each of these are going to pull up a, a page, which will give you that information and own it. Okay. It's a lot of detail, but I think it's a great way to find out some more concrete information on uh, pretty much any career you can imagine out there. Now, another one that's out there is Career Locker. This is put on by uh, UW System. In Career Locker, uh, there is a code that we certainly can provide, so contact our office, and we're happy to give you that. But you will sign up, and it's a free resource for you. Okay. I'll log into my account here and just show you briefly, you know, some of the exploration pieces that are in here. Career Locker is really twofold. In ONED, you found a lot of detailed information on different occupations and, and careers out there. And you'll find that information, uh, you know, and some similar to ONED, some that's different, under that occupational information section as well. Um, Career Locker also has a lot of great videos. So if you're looking at different things, I know the ones that pulled up are like dental hygienist, uh, veterinary technician. What I also love about a Career Locker is they have a lot of what we call assessments. Now, not to worry, it's not like an exam, but these are ways that you can answer some questions uh, about things that you enjoy and don't enjoy, and it will actually match you with some different careers or occupations 
occupations that are out there, right? So real brief type inventories, but that might help you identify some some different uh, different uh, uh, paths that you had not even thought about. So again, Career Locker, contact our office. We will get you a code, which will get you into this for free. My final ones are going to be through Handshake. And I'm going to turn things over to David here to talk about uh, industry uh, resources that are available. But we have a, a variety of resources we have through Handshake. Now, you access that with your net ID. You can either do it from our web, web page or the drop down on the main UW Oshkosh um, uh, web page. Once you log in, you go to the Career Center. You will find a choice for resources. I'm going to encourage you to go through Handshake because Handshake, we, again, have paid for these. If you try to access these on the outside, uh, they're likely going to charge you for them. So the first one I want to show is something called Candid Careers. What Candid Career is, it's a, a snippet of videos that are out there, maybe two to three minutes not only about different career related stuff like networking or interviewing, it's also some great clips on pretty much any type of position you can imagine out there. So it provides some firsthand perspective and you'll see some of the many that are on here highlighted on this page. Okay. So again, career, uh, the career, uh, candid career, those are career oriented videos. Another one I want to take you into real briefly is something called Going Global. Going Global allows you to find out information on different opportunities that are throughout the country here, as well as throughout the world. And it will pull up different career guides, which will give you detailed information. I will pull up, I'll pull up Germany here. But it will give you de detailed information on, you know, what are some of the top fields, you know, employment trends in those areas. How do you go about those searches, you know, as well as some cultural information that you would need if you have an interest to pursue, you know, some uh, uh, internship or, uh, you know, a position after graduation yeah, in these countries or these different parts of the United States. All right. So that is a bit about what we have here on um, on campus. I'm going to turn things over now uh, back to David here uh, to talk about, uh, you know, more of the experiential the resources that are available for you in industry. Yeah, thank you. Um, <clears throat> networking, uh, I've attended uh, several UW events in the last five years on, on networking and we had some roundtables uh, where we just, you know, meet the students and, and meet the uh, graduates, and it worked out really well uh, to meet these folks, and uh, it, it was wonderful. I mean, you want to get to know everyone you can. It, it ultimately comes down to who you know. You may change companies and, and need to know other people that can help you along. Um, you know, simply stated, after 28 years, I, I wish I knew the people before um, that I know now. Uh, it definitely uh, helped, though I, I think I've done quite well. But <laughs> I know about probably 1,500 different companies in the Fox Valley and employees, uh, probably an upside of 5,000. Every day, I'm meeting more and more people. I do know past employees that are working at the customers and past customers, uh, you know, making a change to new employees. And uh, so we see people uh, that worked in one industry or one at one company and are, are working for another one. And the biggest thing that I can, you know, tell all of you from there is, you know, knowing that I deal with floor employees and I deal with, you know, managers, and I deal with presidents, and owners, and you have to fluctuate through there. But the main thing in dealing with these people is to be professional, um, and it, it really works out really neat. Um, that's why I'm here, you know, today doing this is just to, you know, let you guys all know about Fastenal and fill my pipeline uh, to get to know you and to get to, you know, really uh, add potential Fastenal employees. Uh, to my roster. Um, 
LinkedIn is a, is a good site. I'm, I'm not active daily on it, but I, I do pay attention and add acquaintances, you know, here and there. Um, informational interviews is uh, another area. And this is really kind of interesting. It's where you ask a prospective employer, you know, the questions that you need to know. Um, what does a day look like at, at your company? Uh, you know, what is the pay going to be? What are the benefits that the company has? Um, what does my pathway to growth look like? That was real important with uh, me in the beginning of my career. Uh, maybe not necessarily the first year or two, but it really became important in the years to follow. Um, UW uh, Titan, or I should say, and Handshake has a link for that under resources uh, and employment. Um, at Fastenal, we do ride-alongs, so you don't have to be employed or anything. You can, you know, give me a holler, and we'll hook you up with our salespeople and get you out on the road. It takes about uh, three hours to do. We bring you in, we show you around the facility, um, show you the products that we sell, and ask if there's any questions. But then we take you out and do a sales call at a customer site. And then we'll take you out and we'll fill the vending machines. So um, it works out really good. It gives you a chance to kind of see what you're in for, what you're looking at, and all the employees are, are really helpful. Um, definitely. I think if we go to internships, um, I have a couple of people, Mike Vitale, Brianna uh, Barcelona, Jordan Kelvig, Peter McCott. These are all UW students that are working for me right now in an internship. It, it's paid as a part-time employee, and they all get to work alongside of our employees. They fill vending machines, they pack orders, deliver customers they do whatever it is we have to do we all kind of do the same thing pitch in and it's about customer uh, service and um, it's really nice you get to look at fast and all get paid while you're there get your internship done and you know get a feeling for it now I have people that have worked in the internship and worked all throughout the years of college graduated and become full-time at Fast and All. Uh, Eric Harwood is a GM at Oshkosh, and he carried his career through uh, UWO and Fast and All at the same time and, and moved into a full-time position, uh, doing a, a great job. 73% um, of our Fast and All employees touch the customer. And uh, I would, you know, start your internship, you know, early versus, you know, late. We, we'd love to have you on it earlier in your career with college than, than later, but we certainly welcome you all. <clears throat> all right, fantastic. Th thank you, David. So really, you know, I wanna kind of uh, summarize here. You know, the resources I shared with Campus is a great starting point, great way to get a foundation of some of the knowledge to identify some of those different paths that may be of interest to you. The ultimate, is the information that David shared. You know, that ability to connect with individuals out there in the field, networking connections, but also then that ability to get that firsthand perspective with whatever it might be with observations, you know, those, those drive-alongs, all the way up to an internship within that organization. That's gonna give you the best information, um, you know, to help you with that decision, okay? So again, remember, you are not alone. You have two people here that are happy to help you, okay? And uh, our contact information is on here as well. Don't hesitate. I know David or myself are more than happy to, uh, to help you out, answer any questions you might have, and help you with that pursuit. You know, I want to thank David from Fastenal for uh, his time, his valuable time here um, to, to speak with you, and certainly encourage you, you know, to, to check them out at other events. I know they participate in our career fairs. They participate in a number of our other networking events here on campus. They're very visible with our students, all right? And I want to say good luck to you. Good luck to you in this search. Um, you know, um, I know you are not alone. And there are others out here, uh, both on campus as well as off campus, that can help you uh, 
uh, with this this entire process. So thank you for um, for viewing this, and uh, you know have a great rest of your day.